Hello students, welcome to ITTV. How are you today? I hope you are in good health. Today we are going to learn inertia. Now let's look at this simple situation. When you go on a school bus, what happens is the school bus is at rest, that means it's not moving. So when you go on, on board of this bus and you are standing, you realize that there's no seat for you to sit down. But what happens is you have to stand up. As soon as the driver puts on his gear and accelerates, what happens to yourself if you're not holding anything? You actually move backward or another word, jerk backward. Now the bus is going on a constant motion. It's going on a highway. You are still standing, not holding to anything because you're so confident that the bus is going on a straight line. Suddenly, there was a big object in front of the bus. So the next reaction of the bus driver is to press on the brakes. What happens then? The bus actually decelerates and stops. But what happens to you, whom you are actually standing in the bus? You actually move forward or backward? Yes, you actually will be thrown forward because you're not holding to anything and there is a situation in here. So we have seen two different situations. One is when the bus is not moving and when it starts to move, you jerk backward. And another situation when the driver actually press the brakes, the bus actually decelerates and what happens? You move or thrown forward. So why is this situation actually occurring? Is there a solution to this? Is there a term to this? So let's see the term called inertia and let's examine back these two different situations again. In situation A, the train and the passenger are at rest. Situation B, the resistance of the passengers to move causes them to jerk backward. So here we have seen how the passenger actually jerk backwards. Therefore, the passenger in the train experiences a backward jerk when the train accelerates suddenly. So here we can see when the train actually accelerates, the person or the passenger will jerk backwards. Let's look at the next situation. In situation above, the bus is moving with passengers in it. When the bus stops, the passengers continue to be in motion. The resistance of the passengers to stop moving causes them to lurch forward. What does these two situations show? So, these two situations actually say that there is a resistance to a change that occurs. So let's look at the next slide and see what are the similarities between these two situations. Inertia. These situations explain the concept of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to remain in a state of rest or motion unless acted upon by a force. This means an object will try to resist any changes made to its state of rest or motion. So, the concept that is involved in here is actually inertia, whereby a matter resists changes that occurs. So, let's look at this simple demonstration and understand how inertia is related to mass. But before looking into this demonstration, let's look at the explanation part of it. Mass of an object is the quantity of matter contained in the object. The larger the mass of an object, the greater is its inertia. Example showing the relationship between mass and inertia. Here in this illustration, we can see two different types of container, where one is an empty container and one containing sand. Now from the illustration, we can see that one is empty and one contains sand. This is to illustrate how mass plays an important role in this concept of inertia. 
Now the empty container has less mass. The only mass it carries is its own weight, the container's weight. While in the container that contains sand actually has mass, the sand is a mass particles that is inside this container. So the manipulated variable in here is the different number of mass or the weight of these two different containers. Now let's see how these two different types of mass actually contribute and uh, there's a difference in terms of inertia. It is more difficult to push the bucket filled with sand compared to the empty bucket. It shows that the heavier can is more reluctant to start moving due to its greater inertia. So the container that contains the sand is more difficult to push compared to the empty one. Now this is because it has sand. So let's look at this simple demonstration to understand it better because by viewing this demonstration you can see how it is difficult to push and at the same time how it is difficult to stop. Here's a simple demonstration on inertia. In this pail is an empty pail, while in this pail is filled with sand. If you see, the empty pail is very easy to push, but it's hard to push the pail that is filled with sand. So let's see a simple demonstration which will take a longer period of time to stop. I'm going to push these two pails together and release them from the same height. As you can see, the pail, the empty pail stops first compared to the pail that is filled with sand. So we have viewed the demonstration. I hope you have understood how mass is related to inertia. Now let's look at this simple explanation whereby we have a stack of books stacked up and how we can actually remove the most bottom book. But there is a trick to it. You have to do it fast and you can't do it slow. There is a reason to it. Let's look at the explanation and understand how concept of inertia is related to this situation. There are few books arranged on the top of each other on the table. The book in the middle is pulled out quickly. The top book will drop down onto the bottom book. Now, this is something that you commonly do. Whenever you have seen a reference book that you would like to read, you actually pull the book from this stack of books. Now there is a way of doing it by doing it fast and quickly. If you were to do slow, you actually move the whole pile that is on top of this books. But what happens if you just pull it one particular book quickly, the whole top pile of the books will actually and gradually fall down. It's only not applied for books, sometimes to our clothes also. So let's look at this explanation on this stack of books. All the books were at a state of rest. When the middle book is pulled out quickly, the top book falls vertically downwards. Therefore, it still maintains in its original stationary position. This explains inertia. The top book resisted the motion of being pulled out as the middle book. However, since the middle book was taken away, an empty space appeared. Hence, the top book fell straight down. So, this is how it works, how concept, inertia concept is applied in this situation. Now let's look at another demonstration whereby in order to understand the concept of inertia it's not magic but something practical. Demonstration 1 Coin and Tumbler A. Place the coin on the card and place the card over the open 
end of a tumbler. B. Flick the card away sharply and observe the effect of the coin's motion. So let's look at this simple demonstration to understand how this actually works. Here is a simple demonstration involving coin, cardboard and a glass. Let's look at the first demonstration. In here, I'm going to have a slow motion of the cardboard. Let's see what happens to the coin. As I move, the coin follows and goes along together with the cardboard. Therefore, it shows that in slow motion, the coin moves together with the cardboard. Let's look at another demonstration. The same demonstration, but this time, the cardboard will be pulled in a fast motion. Let's see what happens if, if I pull this cardboard in a fast motion. We can see that the coin is displaced into the glass. This is a simple explanation how inertia is related to mass. In this situation, due to the fast motion of the cardboard, makes the coin not to follow and resist the new motion. Therefore, it stays and falls into the glass. So we have seen that the coin actually follows the card. So we have seen two different situations, one pulling fast and how the coin reacts to it and one situation where we pull slowly and we can see how the coin reacts to it also. So let's look at the conclusion of this simple demonstration. Pulling the card slowly means the coin has a low acceleration and so the frictional force between the card and the coin is big enough to accelerate the coin. Pulling the card quickly requires great frictional force to accelerate the coin and so slipping occurs. When the card is quickly pulled away, the coin drops into the tumbler. So here we have summarized what actually happens in these two situations. Now, how does this concept of inertia is applied in our daily life? For instance, cars. Now, if you see the safety features of cars are a lot. But how does these safety features that is applied in a car is related to inertia? One good example is the airbag. This is because, as we know, as we press the brake in instances of a sudden situation, when we press the brake, our body automatically will be thrown forward. To react to this situation, there has to be something placed in order to react back or push back our body to the original position. So here we're going to learn the use of airbags. Airbag. The airbags are fitted in the steering wheel and dashboard. When there is a high impact to the front of the car, the airbags are automatically inflated. This prevents the passengers and driver from hitting the steering wheel and dashboard. So this is the positive effect of airbags where it actually safeguards the driver and the passenger. By doing so, the driver is safe from being thrown forward. Now the motion of being thrown forward or jerked forward is actually normal. This is due to the inertia concept whenever you press the brakes. So, airbags, which is actually install, installed in the steering wheel and the dashboard of the car, plays an important role. So we have seen one, one of the safety features of the car. Now let's look at seat belts. Seat belt. When a car suddenly stops in an accident, the passenger will lurch forward. The seat belt holds the driver and passenger safely in place. It prevents the person in the car from hitting the dashboard, steering wheel or thrown out of the car. Earlier on we have learned 
airbag. Airbag plays an important role, but it is installed at the steering wheel and the dashboard. But seat belts is also important. It plays an important role in order or to react against the reaction that we have that is thrown forward. So seat belts which is compulsory to be worn by driver and also passenger is one of the safety features of the car. Headrest. When a car is hit from the back, the car moves forward. This causes the passenger to jerk backwards. The headrest prevents the passenger's head from snapping back. The headrest protects the neck from being injured. So let's look what we have learned. We have learned airbag and seat belts. But remember, this is a situation where in a, in a situation where the car is moving fast. And as soon as we see something in front, we actually press the brakes. What happens in here is our body will be thrown forward. So in order to react to this situation, we place an airbag and also seat belts. So this is a situation when we are going decelerating the car. Now let's look at another situation. When we are going in a slow motion, suddenly there was an impact from the back of the car. Impact is quite high because the impact actually came from a car that was accelerating fast. So what happens? The car will be brought forward much faster due to this impact that is from the back of the car automatically what happens to the driver the driver will jerk backwards so as they are moving backward what happens is our body is protected by the seat so it's okay but what is protecting our head headrest yes so our head that actually will fling backwards is actually protected or even cushioned by our headrest so this is one way of safety features that protects against the effect of inertia so let's look at some of the questions to understand this topic on inertia question one the tendency of an object to remain in a state of rest or motion unless a force acts on it called a mass b speed c inertia d gravity now let's look again to the definition in the question tendency of an object to remain in a state of rest or motion unless a force acts on it. So that is a simple definition of inertia. So therefore, the answer for this question is C, inertia. Let's look at question two. Which of the following statements are true? One, an object with a smaller mass has a greater inertia. Two, if an object changes its state by using a greater force, then the object is said to have a greater inertia. 3. An object with a larger mass has a greater inertia. 4. The objects at rest have the tendency to move without any force acting on it. A. 1 and 2 B. 2 and 3 C. 2, 3 and 4 D. 1 two, three, and four. Now let's look at the statements, true statements in here. Number one, an object with a smaller mass has a greater inertia. Actually, it's wrong. It should be greater mass has greater inertia. So therefore, number one is wrong. Number two, if an object changes its state by using a greater force, then the object is said to have a greater inertia. So the higher the force that is applied, so the higher the inertia. So therefore, number two, 
is correct. Number three, an object with a larger mass has a greater inertia. It's correct. And as we have seen from the demonstration of the container containing sand, yes, it's obviously the answer for this is true. Number four, the object at rest have the tendency to move without any force acting on it. Any object actually moves when there is force applied to it. So therefore, this statement is actually wrong. So the answer for this question will be two and three. Question three, look at the picture. Which of these will move faster because of smaller inertia? A, a car, B, plane, C, a trailer, D, a train. The question actually says which of these move faster because of smaller inertia. Now smaller inertia is related to smaller mass. So therefore out of these four pictures the smaller mass is actually the car. Therefore the answer is very obvious. In here the answer is A. Let's summarize what we have learned today. We have learned the definition of inertia. We also have seen situation where when a person is inside a train and how the person actually is jerked backward and thrown forward when the bus actually applies brakes. We also have seen the application of inertia whereby through demonstration we can see how mass is related to inertia and we can conclude that higher the mass higher the inertia i hope you have learned a lot of things from this lesson today thank you for watching ittv i'll see you in the next lesson goodbye students